What's going on guys, Dropaduski here. Today we're gonna to be doing our very first Path of Exile guide. Now, I did start playing some Path of Exile. We haven't got a, a new content patch in a long, long time in Diablo 3. And I was thinking a good idea would be to create some new player guides uh, as I'm a new player and I'm learning so, so much every day. So as I learn that information, I wanna share it with you guys. So today we're gonna to be talking about gearing armor and the stats that you're going to be looking for a lot of questions i've gotten in stream are i have no idea if this thing is worth anything i have no idea if i should be using it as an upgrade so today we're going to talk about stat prioritization some benchmarks and what these stats actually are for and why we're looking for them now we're going to talk about resistances and the most important thing to remember about resistances is you want to keep your elemental resistances fire cold and lightning at the cap, which is 75% as often as possible on your character at any given point in the game. Now, the, re the way that you do that is getting elemental resistances on your items in game. There are a few ways to get it higher than that cap via auras or items, and I will demonstrate that for you in a second, but generally you wanna keep them around 75%. Now there are two instances in the game where you will lose 30 to all of your resistances. When you kill Act 5, and Act 10's boss, which are both Kataba. When you kill Act 5's boss, as an example, if you have 75% to cold, lightning, and fire, the moment that you kill that boss, it will drop down to 45%. So as soon as you kill Act 5's boss, you need to revisit your gear, increase your resistances in the elemental areas, and then continue forward so that you can avoid deaths as much as possible by utilizing that cap. Now, when you kill Act 10, the same thing is gonna happen, and you're gonna have to revisit that that again the game is balanced around the player's ability to keep that resistance cap so at any given point when you don't have those resistances it's going to be much harder for you to survive and to maintain a fast pace while farming and also working on XP so if your end game goal is to get to hundred you want to make sure those resistances are on point now there's a couple other things I want to touch on we're going to jump over to the game quickly now when I say 75 as the cap as you can see here let me scoot over um, these three are all at 75 you in in most cases end game are going to want to get this right number in the parentheses 30 higher than that 75 the reason you're going to prioritize that is because certain map modifiers can lower your all resist so if you get maps later in game that are going to uh, lower that if you have it at least 30 above you're not going to have to worry about that at all now Quickly, I'll touch on auras and items can also manipulate this 75 number as 75 is the cap, but as you can see on this shield, plus 3% to all maximum resistances while you have no endurance charges. When I pop this shield on, you'll see now that we are at 78 on these things. You can get that cap higher with auras and items. Briefly, I'll touch on chaos damage. Now, chaos damage is a different thing. Um, you're going to typically see on most software characters negative 60 here as I've lost 30 from Kataba on both Act 5 and 10, but you don't really have to worry about this when playing a softcore character. You don't run into chaos damage all that often, and it's not really going to cause you a lot of issues. Now, if you are on hardcore, you may want to get some chaos resistance on some of your items, but it is kind of costly, so I would say for a softcore character, don't focus it at all. Next, we're gonna jump into defenses. Now, defenses consist of three different types. There's armor, evasion, and energy shields. Armor and evasion are super straightforward. Armor is reduced physical damage taken from mobs, and evasion is a chance to evade an enemy attack. Now, certain builds are gonna rely on one or the other more heavily. It's just every time you look at a build guide, it's going to tell you what you should be relying on. And so make sure to prioritize that when gearing your character. Now, the third thing, energy shield, is kind of a different beast. Now, Energy Shield is basically considered like a secondary health pool. As you can see on the screen behind me, I have life at 5390 and then a shield of 458. That 458 is essentially like more life, except for you cannot regenerate it via flask. 
It auto-regenerates after going a certain amount of time without taking any damage. And you have to prioritize it and get it through your gear, just like life. So basically that's the only real big difference there. Now there are some builds that don't prioritize life, but they prioritize energy shield and energy shield is like their bread and butter. But for the majority of the ones that I've tried so far, you're just stacking life. You're gonna get a little energy shield here and there, and it's gonna be a little extra life pool on top of your actual life. Now jumping into life, life, super straightforward the more of it you got the less likely you are to get shit on or one shot by a mob that hits really hard you're going to want to prioritize looking for it in basically every piece outside of the weapon uh, the higher the better i sent my benchmark as a low benchmark is 60. so when i'm looking for items and i see max life on there and it's got below 60 i think eh, it's probably not worth anything and i'm probably not going to use it for my end game build so 60 is a decent benchmark to look for when looking at life now we're going to go ahead and do a breakdown of every piece of the gear and kind of tell you what you're looking for on each piece or at least a generalized uh, look uh, generalized guide as to what you're going to look for there are going to be instances where these things change based on the builds but this is kind of just your guidebook when you're starting out as a new player for things to look for that you could potentially use on your character or sell for chaos or other currencies in the game uh, we'll go ahead and start out with uh, rings and belts. Now rings and belts are one of your primary sources for finding life and resistances. Now if you take a look at this belt that I'm wearing here, it is 36 to maximum life and then underneath another prefix is 94 maximum life. So I'm getting 120 max life off of this belt. It's super super good. Then combine it with some energy shields, cold resistance and lightning resistance. This thing is fantastic. It could sell for multiple chaos and I've opted to use it rather than sell it. So with rings and belts, it's life and resistances. You wanna get as much as you can there. Typically when I'm looking at resistances, I'm looking between 35 and higher and life I'm looking for at least 60, as I mentioned before. Now with boots, you're gonna be looking for very similarly, life, resistances and movement speed. Now uh, on my prioritization sheet, I will have a, a cheat sheet posted in the description below. I have life, then movement speed, then resistances, as you can get resistances in a lot of other places, but you can't get movement speed in a lot of places, and boots is typically where you're gonna see it the most. So on mine here, I have 20 fire and cold, then some decks, 72 life, more cold, more lightning resist, and then I have some uh, movement speed at the bottom. So. The, your ideal boots are going to be life, movement speed, resistances, gloves. We're going to talk about the stats, then I'm going to show you mine because they're unique, and we're going to mention why uniques can be different than rares. Gloves, ideally you're going to look for life, resistances, attack speed, added damage to attacks, and stats. Now, mine are unique, and the thing about uniques, I want to briefly touch on this, is uniques or anything in PoE that I've noticed is a give and take uniques a lot of times are going to be a really really good source for a build in regards to utility and damage but in order to take that you have to give in the survivability area so a lot of times when you're gearing with uniques you're going to get a huge damage buff but you're going to lose resistances or life or something along those lines so remember that as you're making your new character especially if you're making your own you don't want to full-on gear uniques because you're going to be missing a lot of life or resistances in certain areas most likely so you may have some godlike character that has 10 uniques on but you're going to go into a higher tier map with heavy lightning damage and instantly die so remember that rares are very very strong in this game and uniques can add things to your build but you don't want to prioritize them on every single slot so on this one here i have some strength i have some cold resist but the big thing there is 50 percent of my physical damage is converted to cold this is huge for my builds it gives me tons and tons of damage and i'm willing to sacrifice uh, extra life on these gloves so that i can get more and more damage um next we'll talk about helm once again i have a unique but the number one stats on helm are life resistance and then you want to enchant that helm uh, when doing your labyrinths and we'll do a guide about labyrinths too in the future um, but they do give you an um, an enchantment that you can add to an item and typically you can put it on your helm mine here has dex attack speed global crit chance um, evasion rating max life it's pretty good overall but i am missing resistances here i'm not getting any from that source so we'll jump down over to the chest now the chest is almost always on most builds going to be unique the chest can get up to six sockets and a lot of the unique chests give 
tons of utility or damage. Uh, for my specific build, the Blade Vortex Trickster, I do need an Impulses. It's a huge damage increase, but as you can see, all I get is 71 life here. Everything else is around damage, no resistances. If you're looking for a rare chest that you could potentially sell, number one thing is five sockets linked minimum. If you've got a five link chest that's rare with some super high resist and defenses, then you could potentially sell it, but that's most likely going to be somebody's stepping stone piece into uh, getting their end game chest, which is most likely going to be unique. So what I've done since I'm utilizing so many of these uniques is I've got some resistance on my amulet. So when we're talking about the amulet, typically what you're looking for are stats, which is strength, dex, or intelligence to bring that up so you can level your gems and also uh, wear all the gear, the gear that you need for your character. Um, then you're going to be looking for life, additional damage and then resistances if you need them now if you make up the resistances and you're capped and beyond cap for the curses on every other piece of gear you can throw all the yolo damage you want on your amulet but for me specifically this one has a lot of damage stats and then i've also got some added 22 percent fire resist there to um, help bring my fire resist up and keep me alive when I'm running. Um, the offhand, now shields or anything like that, you're going to be looking for life, defense, and remember defense is either energy shield, evasion, or armor, resistances, and then damage. So here I have a lot of damage on this. I have uh, plus five to energy shield, 21 to cold resist, and then I've also added 52 life via crafting here in, in my, uh, my hideout. So. Um, Remember those stats when you're going through your shields. And finally, uh, last but not least, the weapons. Now, weapons are the one exception. We are not looking for life. We're not looking for resistances. We are looking to slay. So weapons are ideally going to be for casters, utility, speed, or damage. And for melee, it's your primary source of damage. So you want all the damage stats that you can get in regards to your builds. And you want those tiers to be high. Now, the this is our last piece. I'm going to go ahead and talk about tiers just briefly. We're gonna do a more advanced guide on tiers and understanding what they are, but I do wanna demonstrate this for you guys to help you as you're looking for gear. Uh, go into your options and under UI, you want to put a check mark on advanced mod descriptions. Now what this does when you're in game and you hover and push alt on an, a rare item, it will pull up the prefix mods and tiers on each thing. Um, the thing I'm gonna tell you about this, we're not gonna dive too deep into it, but I will say tier one is best and it gets shittier as it goes down. So if you got an item, a weapon that has tons of damage stats on it, it's looking real nice, just quickly hover over it and hit that alt button and say, oh my God, they're all tiers ones and twos. This thing's probably worth a ton, right? So higher tier equals better. Have that on there and just double check items that you've ID'd to make sure and see how the tiers look. Because if you're rolling uh, tier tens on every slot, that item's probably not gonna be worth that much. The last thing I'll touch on since we already went over uniques and the give and take kind of scenario is item levels. Now item levels, meaning the level of the item. When we hover over this, you can see item level 73. The higher that is, the higher potential that it has to roll better mods and tiers, right? It doesn't guarantee. So if you've got a level 100 item or something, you know, you can get a level 100 item through cards. Um, that doesn't mean that the mods will roll all tier one. It just means that it has a higher chance to roll better mods and better tiers. So um, what I like to do typically when I'm farming stuff, like if I'm gonna do blood aqueducts, um, I know that those item levels are gonna be low and I'll probably just save that stuff for a chaos recipe or something. But when I'm doing higher end maps, I definitely just double check on item level. Oh, this is 70 plus. It's probably gonna have some good mods. You know, I know that it's a higher item level and it's something that I wanna keep my eye on. Um, that's it. Every, uh, everything I wanted to cover in this, I want, do wanted to keep it as short as I can, but also be thorough. I want to thank everybody for checking this out. I know that we primarily do Diablo 3 content, but I do want to expand the channel this year, start doing some Path of Exile, start doing some World of Warcraft stuff, and kind of grow the community out into other spectrums and games. Um, if you like this video, definitely throw a thumbs up on it and please subscribe to the channel if you're new uh, to all my people in the community that have been supporting me through trying other games thank you guys so so much it has been so much fun and i love diablo it's my favorite game hands down but i do want to expand and grow and try other things and i appreciate every single one of you that has been there with me while we do this uh, last big shout out is to Sharkbait. he has been helping me like crazy 
Um, he's another PoE Diablo player that's been part of the community for a long, long time. He's been hanging out with Wolfcryer as well for a long time. And definitely stop by and check out his stream as well. I will put a link in the description to his stream and to the, the Google Docs cheat sheet that has all the information we've covered today um, right there so you can check it while you're running and having fun. Everybody, thank you guys so, so much. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you on Friday for season 14 and de definitely check out the Twitch stream. It's twitch.tv slash dropadooski. I'm on Monday through Saturday starting at noon MST. Everybody, thank you guys so much. Peace.